Is humanity ready to begin to colonize Mars? No, but it might be possible for us very soon. The question of should we colonize Mars at all is another question entirely. Some would say no, that we should leave Mars as undisturbed as we can in order to preserve it. But others think that it might become necessary, and it fundamentally doesn't matter because there's nothing living there. But I'm not here to make those kinds of philosophical positions for you today. Let's just get on with it. While not as implausible as something like a shrink ray, the poster boy of sci-fi magic, there are still many significant barriers that we will need to overcome in order to realize this sci-fi dream. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, composed mostly of carbon dioxide, that comes out to be less than 1% of Earth's surface pressure. This means liquid water cannot really exist on the surface. In fact, when people typically talk about water on Mars, they're either talking about the ice at the poles or recurring slope lineae, which is more indicative of mud than anything. Mars has extreme temperature variations, with daytime highs reaching up to 293.15 Kelvin, or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, to nighttime lows dropping to 147.039 Kelvin, or negative 195 degrees Fahrenheit, with an average surface temperature of about 210.928 Kelvin, or negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit making it challenging to maintain a stable living environment. Water is scarce on Mars, with most of it locked in ice at the poles. Extracting and purifying water would be a significant challenge, and this would likely force humans to have to set up camp in the coldest regions of Mars, exacerbating the problem of the extreme temperatures. Mars doesn't have any tectonic or geomagnetic activity, which means no earthquakes, which is kind of cool, but is kind of undercut by the fact that that also means we don't have a magnetic field, which means no Van Allen belts, which further means that we have no protection from cosmic rays, ionizing radiation, or other deadly cosmic hazards. We would therefore need to have some pretty good shielding technology. Ideally, that is lightweight enough for it to be worth carrying all the way across space. Mars has massive dust storms that can last for weeks or even months, spanning the planet and blocking sunlight. These storms can damage equipment, reduce solar power efficiency, and potentially be lethal in their own right, not to mention the presence of toxic chemicals in the soil of Mars. Mars doesn't have the same natural resources found on Earth, meaning we would likely need to transport some essential supplies from Earth and have maximally efficient recycling systems. Energy production would primarily rely on solar power, which would be inconsistent due to the dust storms. Mars has gravity, but only about 38% of Earth's gravity. This lowered gravity, despite being super fun to play around in, Are you using your time out? I get time out? Why did I get time out? Hey, I didn't invent the rules. What rules? This lowered gravity could have long-term health effects on the human body. In particular, it could drive lower bone density and more muscle atrophy. Building and maintaining habitats, life support systems, and other infrastructure on Mars would require advanced technology and significant investment. 
these systems would need to be maximally reliable and have several fail-safe systems in place, since the safety of these systems in such a harsh environment is absolutely critical. Mars is very far away from Earth. Depending on orbital positions, it can be up to 400 plus million kilometers away. This means long communication delays and extended isolation. The psychological impact of isolation, confinement, and the looming threat of death promised by the harsh environment surrounding you could be a little bit devastating. Of course, these aren't all the problems, but that's a start. Once we can solve these, we'll still have more problems that we have to deal with. Organizations like NASA and SpaceX are currently working on these problems, and they both have ambitious plans. NASA is slightly more conservative with their timeline, and aims to send astronauts to Mars in the 2030s. And they are currently doing lunar missions to serve as the proving ground for Mars technology. SpaceX is even more ambitious. They said they would have their first crewed mission potentially as early as 2024, though it seems as though that has been delayed to 2029 at the earliest. Their ultimate vision includes establishing a self-sustaining colony on Mars by 2050. But personally, I'm skeptical of this timeline. Both NASA and SpaceX are advancing powerful propulsion technologies. SpaceX's Starship and its Super Heavy Booster is designed for high payload capacity. NASA is investigating nuclear thermal propulsion systems which may yield faster and more efficient travel. NASA is currently developing very advanced life support systems, which will first be tested on the moon, but these technologies aim to provide safe living conditions in the harsh Martian environment. SpaceX is focusing on ISRU to minimize the need for Earth-based supplies. This includes producing rocket fuel and breathable air using local resources, and utilizing the Martian ice, which is crucial for sustainability. Most of the relevant data we have comes from NASA, whose robotic missions like the Perseverance rover are gathering valuable data to inform future human missions, including collecting samples of Mars. Another conceivable idea is that we could try to terraform Mars. Terraforming is the process of making a planet more habitable. We would have to warm the planet or transform its atmosphere, activate its core, stuff like that. But we don't really have a lot of practical solutions that don't carry significant consequences. While it's a nice idea, it can't really be done. The sheer magnitude of what would need to be done to terraform all of Mars implies that it's a far more distant goal than simply setting up a habitable colony. Not to mention the moral, ethical, and legal debate that needs to be had about doing it. We might not ever figure out terraforming. It might remain a theoretical endeavor indefinitely. But until we do, we have a set of problems, and we're working to overcome them. But until that day comes, the quest of conquering Mars will remain a not-so-distant idea.